don't even know what I'm doing. Keep moving forward. I mean, this stuff is way too advanced for me. Just keep swimming. What if I can't fix this? What are we gonna do? Hakuna Matata. Why do you keep saying that? And don't just say keep moving forward. Meet the Robinsons, a Disney movie about an orphan named Lewis who learns, through the means of time travel, that we can make things better as long as you keep moving forward even when met with failure. It's also based on the book A Day with Wilbur Robinson from 1990. This movie is pretty good, but it's also… weird. And I'm not just talking about the movie itself, cause time travel is time travel, but I'm also talking about the way I experienced the movie, and I'm not sure if I'm the only one. Though given my last video when I said that, that's probably the case. My experience with it was not seeing it in a movie theater, but only on Disney Channel, and could have sworn I've seen the entire movie several times, but I also didn't remember like 90% of it, so I had to rewatch it recently for this video. Again, this movie's weird. It was also supposed to get a sequel just like Chicken Little, and surprisingly, it's not the one I was talking about in my review for Chicken Little Ace in Action. Anyways, both of these properties got video games related to their movies, and since I wanted to do another Disney game recently, today I'll be looking at the Meet the Robinsons video game to... I don't really have an angle here. Eh, keep moving forward. Okay, the disdain for that joke is fair. We start out with Wilbur opening the sarcophagus of King Tut, so we can take a picture with him. He then causes a booby trap to go off and manages to escape the almost constant death trap inside and makes it back to the future. His dad, who's on a business trip, leaves a message to not mess with the time machine as it can alter the universe. But of course, Wilbur doesn't listen and tries to use it to get a picture with Abraham Lincoln, because he just wants to take pictures with people in history that he finds cool. He gets caught up in doing chores and hanging with family because the password to the garage was changed, but afterwards he accidentally leaves the door to the time machine open, allowing the onlooking bowler hat guy to steal it. Wilbur then has to steal the second time machine in his dad's basement to go after him. Then he chases the bowler hat guy around the science fair, but Carl tells him to come back as the future has been changed drastically with some guy named Stanley ruling the world with magma industries and Queen Lizzie's army of mechanical ants fighting for dominance. Oh yeah, and the time machine got stolen by ants. Due to this, Wilbur has to set the space-time continuum back to normal, or at least normal considering that he defiled King Tut's sarcophagus, but eh, who really cares about that? This takes up most of the game, and doesn't that seem kinda... off? Because somewhere in the middle of the story, you'll probably realize that the middle has pretty little to do with the beginning. The only time we interact with or even hear of the Boulder Hat guy's whereabouts at this point are early on with the only lingering connection being the time machine. However, the future was changed drastically, mind you, so he must have done something, right? Well, no. As it turns out when encountering Stanley, Wilbur figures out that when he was chasing the bowler hat guy at the science fair, he accidentally knocked young Stanley into young Lizzie, ruining their projects which then had a giant domino effect leading to the future currently happening. He then corrects this, which then leads to dealing with the bowler hat guy, and then the future changes again, this time with the ruling of the bowler hat, Doris. Wilbur defeats Doris, but it doesn't change anything, so he goes back into the past to make sure that Lewis keeps moving forward. Meaning yes, this game is a prequel to the movie. I have to give the game props for going with the prequel story as most license based games go with one of three routes. Following the movie plotline with changes varying and potentially retelling the events that have already happened, a sequel to the movie, or is pretty ambiguous on when it takes place. It's one of the more refreshing stories I've seen so far because of this. The midpoint having nothing to do with the bowler hat guy is on rather weird footing. It's a double-edged sword because it shows how one little thing, no matter how minuscule, can change the future immensely. Classic butterfly effect and it's what the movie talks about very often, which is cool. But with how minuscule of a change it is, it can be seen as stupid. Honestly, most time travel stories are like that. The only problem I have is that in the movie, the current scenario in the game would mean that Wilbur shouldn't be born but he's still able to go into the past and make changes, which is the movie, but those changes cause him to not be born even though it leads to the same future. Maybe it's because Lewis isn't there, but even then... Time travel is one of the most stupidly cool elements in storytelling and I hate that I love it. The art style is done very well. There's a lot of expression in the animations, and it especially applies to certain jokes, aiding in them being pretty funny if I'm being honest. Carl, theme song please.
the other one. Environments look great too, as there is a lot of color and variation in the places you go to, keeping things fairly fresh as you go through the game. Another key element is how some things change depending on when in the story you're playing. Firstly, the main menu describes what is currently going on from whenever you left the game. The hero is in an altered future, on his way to the industrial district of a city gone wrong, horribly wrong. In game, the background around the Robinson house is different depending on the future you're in, and Sandy and Lizzie become part of the household in one of the features as well. It's nothing super impressive, but the details are definitely better than expected. Something else in this game's favor is the fact that every voice actor is the same from the movie, and they all perform greatly. The only odd thing with the voice acting is that outside of special cutscenes, voice lines tend to interrupt each other, like a majority of the game does this. Wilbur, how about I paint you orange? Hey, I love orange, but maybe later. Done. And also complete. Great. Now I can go back to my job where the thrills never stop. Emperor Stanley apologizes for any inconvenience. We have to get to the industrial district! The tram will reopen once the robo ants are eliminated. This is definitely the first game I've seen that consistently does that. Regardless of that, the music, just like everything else, is great. A good amount of it is catchy and you just might find yourself humming some of it. There are also multiple variations of some songs that add, take away, or even use different instruments. The differences, while subtle in-game, give varying amounts of intensity to the situations where they play, and I find that really cool. There's also one song that sounds like it's from Plants vs. Zombies and I find that kinda hilarious. The low screens are blueprints which are rather detailed. Makes sense given that it's a blueprint and all, I would hope that it has details on it. You can mash the shoulder buttons to make the blueprint all wobbly. There's not much I can really add to that, it's just kinda cute. You play as Wilbur as you traverse through various areas and timelines. Wilbur automatically parkours over any small object and leaps over gaps when running into them. You can also walk along ledges and grab large objects to pull or push them to where you need them to be. In addition to this, he can lock onto targets which causes him to strafe with the ability to roll. Throughout the game, you'll use gadgets to navigate areas and defeat enemies you come across, but you'll have to make these gadgets, or at least most of them, using the transmogrifier. To make them, as well as upgrades and cheats, you need blueprints as well as the necessary amount of free materials that you can obtain and any special additional pieces needed. Most gadgets have multiple abilities to serve their function, some of which require energy from this purple bar. First off, you have your disassembler, gotten from the basement. This can deconstruct most objects in the game and drops any of the three materials I was talking about. It can also be shot at long range as long as you have energy. Then there's the scanner, which scans the area around you, revealing how you are able to interact with objects and the environment. Its other function is to scan a single target to either see what you get for disassembling it or give details about the object. The charge glove, gotten from Wilbur's room, throws out a projectile. When using energy, you can look at multiple targets resulting in the projectile ricocheting among the selected items. The left gun lifts up objects, and that's pretty much it. It's an incredibly simple gadget. Finally, the Havoc glove shoots sonic waves which can destroy some large clusters or push particular objects. It also has the ability to burrow into the ground, which allows you to hit enemies from underneath them and access to a tunneling minigame where you have to dig your way to the exit while avoiding hazards around, which perfectly segues into the next part. Along with the tunneling, there are some other minigames. Charge Ball uses the Charge Glove and power-ups to break the opponent's bricks and throw a charge shot into the goal. Protective Sphere puts you into a bubble that you roll around in to try and reach the end. There are some orbs that can be picked up to extend the duration of the bubble, since they'll run out otherwise. There's also one where you dodge large meatballs by strafing and rolling to step on buttons. Oh yeah, since there's enemies around, you can go to an aid station to recover health and energy. But there's also a minigame that's separate from the main story, Security System. In this, the bowler hat guy has invaded the Robinson household and you have to stop him as Carl, taking control of the security system. You must use it to take out the bowler hat guy as well as the Doris hats that he throws out. You can also correct any mistakes made by them by shooting the thing that needs to be corrected. I know that's vague, but there's four different rooms here. There is a lot of incentive to use each of your gadgets and their multiple powers. The scanner helps if you're stuck on areas and honestly more useful than the actual in-game help. It also reveals hidden walls in various areas that give special goodies, which can only be found by looking at the wall directly with the scanner. 
The charged glove can normally take out enemies, but the ricochet not only hits multiple targets, but does more damage, allowing you to take out enemies easier. Something that's especially cool is combining these gadgets for defeating enemies and progressing through areas. You can use either the disassembler or the love gun to stun them, and then use the charge or habit gloves to take them out. The minigames are pretty enjoyable too. They don't feel like they break the pacing too poorly either, which was a bit of a concern at first for me. There is one protectosphere level that is actually abysmal though. Seriously, what is this level design? But outside of that, minigames were enjoyable. You're also rewarded for being good at the game and for searching around. At one point, you come across the Charge Ball Champion, and by beating him in a game, you get a Varsity Charge Glove, which has increased damage, and this is the only time where you'd be able to get this. The other ones usually result in the cosmetic blueprint, those of which being hats and shirts. There are a ton of chests around that you can disassemble for extras, like action figures, VR discs for charge ball, concept art, and blueprints. Speaking of the blueprints, most of them are useful to get, and there are always opportunities to get materials from the areas you go to, including inside the Robinson house. Plus, the materials you get from certain objects are consistent, so you can always farm certain materials from particular objects when you need to, instead of having to just be lucky. This makes creating the blueprints very manageable. The Havoc Gloves suck to use. The normal attack feels like it doesn't work half the time, and even if it does, it's very much outclassed by the Charge Glove. But the main way you'll be using this thing for attacking isn't even the Sonic Shock way. It's the Burrow, which feels rather clunky to use. For ducking under lasers, it's fine since you don't really have to move around much, but when trying to hit moving enemies, it's quite a bit more difficult since you constantly move forward, and turning around feels impossible. Oh, and when going down, you can still get hit during that, so gotta make sure to do it nice and early. I also don't like the minigame with it. It feels very easy to screw up both by dying and getting stuck, causing you to restart the entire thing. And having to do that a lot is just draining. Also, I don't know what this filter is over this, but that makes it even more irritating to look at. Energy upgrades are kinda pointless. They increase the amount of energy for you to use in succession, but the problem is when that meter is empty, it recharges fast. When you use any energy, you probably will be standing still for puzzles, and when you're moving around, you more than likely aren't gonna notice that it has to recharge before you can use it again. It charges that fast. Because of this, you also don't have to go to aid stations unless you need health. Even if you did, there's enough aid stations around to where you wouldn't have to worry about a shortage even if the regen thing wasn't so strong. On top of that, each gadget has its own energy meter. It hardly matters if you get energy upgrades because you never really run out of it. It is far more worth your time to put materials into any other blueprint. Maybe if there were other upgrades that utilizes the gadget's strength, like the disassembler gets you more materials from disassembled objects, or the lab gun gets another ability that lets you do a jump blast thing so you can jump to higher areas. Specific stuff that makes the experience better, normally through quality of life additions. I'm gonna be real with you, the first hour of the game sucks. It's about an hour just running around asking family members about who changed the password on the garage door before them interrupting you and having to do some tax for them. And my goodness, it's so boring. Thankfully, the rest of the game isn't like this, but this was not the best start to the game. Jumping freely would be so nice. I often find myself repeatedly parkouring over an object when I just want to turn around and shoot it with the disassembler. I also accidentally softlocked myself by pushing a block the wrong way and couldn't jump up a 2 inch ledge. But outside of those situations, it's not too bad. When it comes to the scanner's bonus stuff, it's a little 50-50. You get rewarded for scanning a bunch of objects as well as scanning all objects in an area, and I'm glad that you are rewarded for being so diligent. But at the same time, there's no counter for how many things are scannable in an area. Not to mention the fact that you can't go back to some areas either. So if you missed it, oh well. This means you have to be aware of scanning constantly in order to make sure you get everything, even if it's the most mundane thing on the planet. Again, an additional blueprint where you would get a counter for that stuff on your scanner would have been great. Granted, you don't actually have to do this, you really only need to if you're trying to 100% the game, and even if you do miss stuff, you'll get rewarded a decent amount. 
I also want to mention that you can create cheats that lets you get all the action figures and concept art which does aid in having to do this the long way, but hope you made the cheat before beating the game because if you save after that, you have to restart the whole game to get those cheats again and there is no warning for this restart process. The process is tedious, but there are workarounds, but you've got to be aware of one of them if you do plan on playing the game after this point. Oh yeah, and security system. It's alright. It's pretty easy until much later, and even then I really had to let myself die. But it's a side mode, so I'm not too concerned about it. It's good enough. This was a genuine surprise. This game isn't exactly a masterpiece, there's some issues here and there, but I'm actually pretty impressed. Most of the gameplay is interesting to me with the useful gadgets that you'll use often, and there's a couple of funny, cool, and dumb moments in the story to keep you engaged. Now, this may be because the last license based game I'd put at even A tier was half a year ago, but regardless, this game is definitely the best one I've played this year so far. What's going on my fellow residents, it's me to Frozen Cavern, and thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. So I said at the end of the last video that I plan on doing another Disney game, and this was that. And not the Lion King. I said that I had the game, but I didn't say I was playing it. At some point I'm gonna have to do the Lion King game now. It's also not flushed away, which someone pointed out because of the intro, and it actually would have been great if I did that, but uh, yeah, that didn't happen. But regardless, that is another Disney game that I have under my belt now, so hooray for that. I don't really have too much to say about the movie. If you have an interest in the movie, then I guess just watch it. There's not much else I can really say about that. So, if you have not already, make sure you go down to the description below because that's where all of my social medias are located. My Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Discord, and Patreon are all in the description, and they are all ways for you guys to be notified of whenever I post another video or have an update for the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more, as well as share this video out with your friends and family. But until the next video, take care.